the Bristol Low Decker, a low bridge double deck bus that many wanted but could not buy. To the rescue came Dennis with a new model of nearly identical specs, but this too was very difficult to acquire. This is the story of the Dennis Low Line, the bus you wanted but could not have. Hi, this is Jeffrey. Now, back in 1949, Bristol released a new bus called the Lodeca. And the Lodeca was designed and built to address the very uncomfortable situation with low bridge buses at the time. Now, the problem with the Lodeca was that it was only available to state owned bus companies for purchase. And other bus companies that were not owned by the state could not buy this bus, even though it was badly needed. So about 10 years later, Dennis releases a new bus called the Low Line. And the Low Line was basically a licensed built version of the Low Deca. The problem is that the Low Line was very restricted in production numbers. And that's what we're going to look at today, the Dennis Low Line. So let's get started in learning about the Dennis Low Line. In 1949, the new Bristol Lodeca made its debut. The point of its design and introduction was to end the uncomfortable and inconvenient low bridge double deck bus layout, replacing it by lowering the chassis frame and integrating it with the body and fitting a drop center rear axle so that there were no steps from the rear entrance platform to the front of the passenger gangway. About 5,200 were built until 1968. But not all bus companies were permitted to buy the Lodeca, so another solution was needed. The Dennis Low Line was basically a license-built Bristol Lodeca being primarily supplied to municipal operators, private sector British electric traction fleets, and independent bus companies in the United Kingdom during a period when Bristol's sales were restricted to state-owned bus companies. Production began in 1958 and was to cease in 1962. However, this was quickly reversed and it continued to be produced until 1966. Three versions of the Dennis Low Line were built, which were number one, the Low Line with rear entrance, later known as the Low Line One. Number two, the Low Line Two with a front entrance. And number three, the later Low Line Three with a revised front grille in front of the radiator and a different clutch and constant mesh gearbox. The story of the low line is an interesting one. From copying Bristol's Lodeca LDL 6G, Dennis introduced improved Lodecas. The low line one differed from the LDL 6G in several ways. It had a more powerful braking system using full air pressure. Dennis four or five speed gearboxes, 24 volt electrical system, and a larger fuel tank plus a different front panel. Let's now take a look at some of the basic specifications of the low line. Dimensions were length was 8.5 meters or 27 feet 11 inches to 9.4 meters or 30 feet 10 inches. Width was 2.4 meters or 7 feet 10 inches and height was 4.12 meters or 13 feet 6 inches. Engine choices were number one, the AEC AV470, number two, Leyland 0.600, number three, the Gardner 6LW, and number four, the Gardner 6LX. The first Low Line 2 was brought about by R. Edgley Cox, the enterprising general manager and engineer of Walsall Corporation. He wanted a double-decker where the driver could control the passenger flow, leaving the conductor to concentrate on collecting fares on busy urban routes. The single-step entry of the low line would speed loading and unloading. Bristol sent drawings of such a chassis that had been shown to state-owned companies which had shown little interest. 
Dennis built the prototype Lodeca FLF6G chassis and it was exhibited by Willowbrook with a 70 seat body at the 1958 Commercial Motor Show as Walsall Corporation No. 800 which entered service in January of 1959. After the show, Dennis and Bristol engineers collaborated on a production version as the original was rather flimsy in construction. The new chassis frame had additional strength added behind the engine bulkhead to the first cross member reinforcing the entrance area. Air suspension was fitted for the rear axle, although when Bristol began building their chassis it used leaf springs. Dennis offered a choice of AEC AV470, Garner 6LW, 6LX and Leyland 0600 engines. The first Dennis built Lowline 2 started work in January 1959, 11 months before the first Lodeca FLF entered service. Dennis showed off their new Lowline 3 chassis on its stand at the 1960 Commercial Motor Show. This had a redesigned and modernized front structure, a new 4 or 5 speed constant mesh gearbox and a redesigned chassis frame to take a semi-automatic gearbox with a rear frame extension for rear entrance bodies. A wedge shaped fuel tank was fitted behind the rear axle between the side members. Air suspension on the rear axle was standard. Gardner 6LW, 6LX and Leyland 0.600 engines were available. In 1961, Barton Transport ordered a unique low-line number 861 which had low bridge bodywork built by Northern Counties on a low-line 2 chassis and was the lowest ever recorded roofed British double-decker at a height of 12 feet 5 inches or 3.78 meters. It was specially designed to pass under an ultra-low railway bridge at Soli Junction. Featuring a full frontal design with wrap-around windscreens, it was quite different from all other low-lines built. Thankfully, this unique bus was preserved. Older shot and district traction operated the largest number of Dennis Lowline buses. China Motor Bus in Hong Kong put one Dennis Lowline into service in 1963. It was the first double decker bus on Hong Kong Island. Another Lowline demonstrator for China Motor Bus in Hong Kong was never exported and sold to a UK operator. The last low-line chassis were constructed in 1966, bringing the total to 280 buses over an approximately 10-year period. There should have been considerably more, but a managing director restricted production to one vehicle a week when additional buses could have easily been built. This managing director rejected a potential order from Ribble for 40 Lowline 2s which resulted in Leyland building the Albion Lowlander, a copy of the general design and the loss of BET Group business, and stopping any chance of supplying the Scottish bus group which could not order a sufficient number of Lodeckas to meet its needs. Just before this director retired in 1962, he increased Lowline 3 prices by 10%, resulting in all the customers with chassis on order cancelling them. Apart from the Aldershot and District business, only 4 orders totaling 29 chassis were sold in the following 4 years. A sad end to a model that could have been an important part of the double deck market. So there it is, the story of the Dennis Lowline. Now admittedly, the Lowline was not the most sexiest of buses. As you can see, its bodywork was not the most stylish and it was pretty similar through its entire production run. There were a few variations, but it was for the most part very similar throughout all of the models that were produced of the Lowline. But I do think that this was an interesting story because you have 
a bus that was built, meaning the Lodeca, that a lot of operators wanted but could not have. And then an alternative was created, and that too was restricted in production. And then at the very end, there was big price increases, and a lot of operators who had orders then canceled them. So it's a very interesting story to look at. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Dennis Lowline. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye.